Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube, Ren here. So I have yet another plant I wanna talk about here in my garden. It is this plant that is right behind me. Uh, this is comfrey. Uh, Symphytum officinale is the most common um, species that you see. Um, it is a perennial in the borage family, uh, Borgonaceae. Um, however, you will also sometimes see this plant hybridized, um, which I believe the one that I have may actually be a hybrid. Um, in which case it would be the Symphytum ex uplandicum. It's usually the, um, the European comfrey or common comfrey is sometimes mixed with the Russian comfrey and gets this hybrid as well. They've, um, they're very closely related species. Sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between them. Um, but in any case, they're all comfrey. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, this is a perennial, like I mentioned, usually grows to about two to three feet tall. Um, has these very unusual sort of like almost triangular stems with the um the sort of veins on them and they're very coarsely hairy and prickly um the leaves of course are these land shaped also very coarse sort of hairy prickly feel to them um and it does make mine makes these lovely violet bell-shaped flowers but you can also see these flowers in blue, pink, or sometimes even yellow in the wild type forms. Um, it has a very, very deep root system. Um, they can grow up to several feet deep. Um, this plant will readily regrow from the roots. So basically, wherever you plant it, that's where it's going to be. Choose wisely because you're not going to be able to get rid of it from that spot. So <laughs> yes, be very careful when you, if you choose to plant this in the ground, um, you're it's going to be there forever. Um, this does grow in zones four to eight, just about any conditions of sun or shade, but in the warmer climates, like such as where I live, it does benefit from some part shade, especially in the afternoon. So you can see I have mine under my trees where it gets some afternoon shade and it does, it does really, really well in that area. Uh, it does usually prefer a little bit moister soil. Um, it can grow in drier conditions. It just doesn't get quite as full as this. So um, this was commonly used as a medicinal plant historically. Uh, some of the common names are knit bone and bone set. Uh, in fact, the name Symphytum itself is Greek for grow together plant. Um, that's basically what it was used for traditionally. However, it has been found now with the advances that we have in modern science and medicine um, that some of the compounds that this plant makes are actually hepatotoxic, meaning that it is dangerous to your liver. So we do not recommend any type of ingestion of this plant and even just topical use of this plant over a prolonged period of time can be dangerous because those hepa hepatotoxic compounds can be absorbed through the skin. So beware. Um, don't really recommend this for, um, you know, medicinal uses. It does have some compounds in it that may increase cellular um, reproduction, but they're not very easy to separate out from those toxic compounds, so be very wary about this. Um, that doesn't mean you can't grow it, of course, because obviously it's safe to handle. And um, it is a lovely addition to the garden. You can see it gets this big sprawling look to it. Um, these little bell-shaped flowers are super attractive to bees. In fact, I can hear several bumblebees buzzing behind me in this uh, comfrey plant. They just love it, love it, love it. Um, in addition, one of the natures of this plant, it has that really deep root system. It draws up minerals from really deep in the ground up into these leaves that don't really have a lot of fibrous content to them. The leaves break down very readily. Um, so comfrey makes an amazing compost amender, um, getting some of those nutrients into your compost. Um, and even just the, the leaves can actually be sort of steeped, uh, left to rot basically in a bucket of water. And then you can use that water as a fertilizer for your plants uh, for foliar feeding. Um, so one of the cool things about this plant is that you can actually cut it down to the ground like several times a year, about three to four times a year is what I do, um, and it will completely grow back. So like right now, it's it's getting a little wild and sprawling and starting to flop over. That to me tells me it's time to cut it down. So I will remove most of these stems, put them in my compost or make comfrey tea 
for foliar feeding out of it um, and it will grow back and look just like this again in another month. It's pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, it's a great little garden plant. Just be careful where you plant it because it'll be there forever. <laughs> So let's talk about some of the magical uses of this plant. So this is an interesting little plant. Um, this plant is governed by Saturn, which is the planet of boundaries and limitations, uh, amongst other things. But um, a lot of people, of course, aren't really comfortable working with Saturn magic because um, you know, they're, they're much happier with its opposite, the Jupiter, that, you know, joyous expansion and everything. They don't want to think about putting limitations on themselves. But in actuality, limitations and boundaries are healthy. Um, and this is a great use to establish those, um, those healthy boundaries. So, for example, getting other people to respect your personal boundaries is a good use for a Saturn plant. Um, one of the most traditional uses for this plant is preventing theft. And basically, again, that's sort of respecting personal boundaries, saying, this is mine and not yours, you can't have it, it stays here. So, um, again, that's sort of that embodiment of what the plant does itself. That plant stays in one place, and it's good for getting your property to stay where it belongs. So, um, you can put comfrey leaves in your purse or wallet in order to keep your wallet where it's planted. Um, you can wrap your money in a comfrey leaf um, because that basically tells the money that it, even if it leaves, it needs to come back to that spot. So um, you can use it as sort of like financial magic to make sure your money returns to you. Um, the other thing too, this is a good plant for shadow work, that really deep shadow work. Um, the roots, of course, are symb symbolic of that diving down deep and bringing those things up to the surface. Um, and then the leaves, of course, are for incorporating and sort of growing and bringing together that which was brought up and um, sort of transmuting it into a healthy, um, beneficial thing. So this is a plant I would definitely use for shadow work for that reason. I love it. It's, it's a really cool plant and I think it's kind of underrated as far as its appearance go. A lot of people don't like it because it's so rough and prickly, like you don't you know, you don't want to have it someplace where you're going to be brushing up against it regularly because it's it's uncomfortable to do so on a regular basis because it's prickly and it, it makes you itchy. But it's, uh, it's a great looking plant. It's a great amender to your garden. If you have any kind of composting or fertilizing that needs to be done, you really should have comfrey somewhere in your garden to use it for that. Um, and it's just a really super magical plant. So one of my favorites. Anyway. I love this plant. I wanted to share it with you. And as always, I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.